Well, our offices here are in Northern Virginia, stone's throw from the Pentagon. So trying to get to work that morning, um, I was in Northwest Washington and it was impossible because everything was gridlocked. Nobody could go anywhere. There was a rumor a minute. There was supposed to be a car bomb at the State Department. There was a, a plane at the Pentagon that had crashed into the Pentagon, which turned out to be true. And when that turned out to be true, it made it very difficult for me physically to get to work, but I did ultimately. How did you initially find out about it? I found out about it on a television set walking out of the gym. I mean, in the most ordinary way possible. I found out later that a cousin of mine works at the World Trade Center and his bus was late. And because his bus was late, he wasn't at work that day, uh, at that time. Uh, there was so much serendipity that day, and it happened in newsrooms too. Um, when I, at that night, we did, a new, we did a Washington Week special. It was a Tuesday night. Uh, and it was mostly getting reporters around a table or in a remote to, to, to dump their notebooks again and say what they had seen. And, at the 10 year anniversary, we got a lot of them to do that again for us on tape and we put it online. And it was, there's been a lot of talk about the victims of 9-11 and the impact and the ripple effect, but very few places did people talk about what reporters saw and how it affected how we do our, our jobs. We had reporters who said, you know, I became a news correspondent, a war correspondent. I never meant to be a war correspondent, but this story, this moment, so much changed my worldview of what I needed, the story I needed to tell. We had one young woman who said that she had left the business and realized because she was of Arabic descent, she needed to go back in the business because someone who spoke Arabic and understood that culture needed to be part of our storytelling. And, and we knew that there were two things that happened at PBS. One is we knew that people were desperate for information. So the News Hour and Washington Week and Frontline and all of our public affairs programs were on 24-7. But we also knew that for children, there needed to be a place to go where they weren't horrified. And so PBS kept its regularly scheduled children's programming up all day because there had to be a destination, a safe destination for young people who couldn't take it all in. So we had kind of a dual role during all of that. And I think we rose to the occasion like everybody did. Did it affect you per personally as well, I mean, and professionally um, in terms of how I you think did it, work? I, I, I think it affected me in that I, I process differently um, talk of war and peace and um, terror. I don't use the word lightly because people were truly terrified that day. I think before 9-11 we all thought kind of in an abstract idea about attack and about vulnerability. And for the first time Americans felt very vulnerable. For the first time reporters felt like we had to keep asking and pressing and, and that peop we had a responsibility that was larger than just being a reporter and getting the answer. It was that we were the voice, we were the pass-through for everybody at home who was going, why, how, how could this be? And most importantly, am I going to be safe? For a long time after 9-11, my commute to work took me on a road right past the Pentagon at the point of impact. And you could smell smoke for weeks and weeks. On, one, on the left side of the road, I could watch the progress of the reconstruction. And on the right side of the road was Arlington National Cem Cemetery, and you saw the burials of people who had gone off to fight in Iraq and then Afghanistan. So it's kind of you saw cause and effect on my commute every single day, and that influenced the kinds of questions I asked that night of whichever military expert I was talking to, because the cause and effect was right outside my door.